Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy, I'm from Singapore. If you haven't done so, I'd like to remind you to like and subscribe to my channel because I've got new videos uploaded for you every week. In today's video, we are going to take a very quick look at the Orient Star 1964 Diver. This is a very new model, I believe it was launched just a few months ago and I was very lucky to have Eric of Our Boutique loaning me this watch for the video today. Thank you very much Our Boutique for being a great friend of mine. So for those of you out there who are familiar with Orient and Orient Star, you know that Orient Star represents sort of a higher range of models from If Orient. you ask me, I will rate this one in the same category as the higher end Seiko Pro Specs watches. So for example, I will rate the Orient Star Diver here I'm holding on to. I would think it falls under the same price category as well as the same build quality as the newer 63 Mars or the newer Captain Willard. Mm -hmm. This one here retails for Singapore dollars $1,739. Street price is $1,390. When you enter this price range, you're expecting sapphire glass with anti-reflective coating. You're going to get things like solid links, bracelets, solid endings, solid clasp, not nail clasp. And I would generally think that the movements included in these watches, they are of higher accuracy, higher shock resistance. Reference number for this watch is RE-AU0602E. And this one houses Orion's in-house movement caliber F6N47. It is still a low beat movement, 21.6K beats per second. This one comes with power reserve indicator here at the 12 o'clock. And we've got a dome sapphire crystal here with AR coating. We've got Things like solid bracelets, solid endings, solid links. But this one here is still using pins and collars for sizing and resizing. And Orion has been very quick to milk on the success of the 1964 dive. So for the second edition, they've sort of changed up things a little bit. Of course, you've got this new dial color here, which is just stunning. I'm going to spend more time to talk about this dial color later on in the review. But the main differences over here will be the overall design and the handset. The handset here is vastly different from the first edition. And now with the lens zoom in just a little bit, let me just run through with you the key specs of this watch here. It's got a bezel size of 41 millimeters and the case size is also widely uh, regarded as a 41 millimeters. If you look at this closely here, you will see that the bezel is slightly bigger than the case itself, but officially Orion has listed this as a 41 millimeter diver. Total thickness here of the Orient Star Diver is 14.5 millimeters and that is including this dome sapphire crystal. Luck width here is 20 millimeters. Again, in offense of strap changing, uh, they're gonna have a good time with this one here. Rubber straps, vintage tropic rubber, even nice thick brown leather strap. LTL measurement here is rather long. It comes in at 49.6 millimeters but this is not a problem because there is a bit of a downturn here. Very aggressive sloping here on the lux, thereby making it feel and look as though it is shorter than 49.6. Some extra dimensions for you not listed on Orion's website. We've got a crystal size of 30.6 millimeters. I would think with this measurement, the legibility here would be very good. The dial here is still pretty big for a case diameter of 41 millimeters. And lastly, we've got a crown here, a screw-in crown. Nicely signed with Orion's logo. Now this one here, comes in at around 6.5 millimeters. Slightly on the smaller side of things and I think the grip here is just about reasonable, all right? Decent, not the best, all right? I would prefer a bigger crown or better grip when it comes to dive watches. Moving on to the case design and build quality of the Orient Star Diver 1964. We've got a multi-faceted case over here. And I feel that you know, the attention to details is there. You can really feel that this is a slightly higher range watch from Orion. So we've got plenty of polished surfaces here on the case itself. I would say close to 90% of this watch case is polished. We've only got two parts here on the lux that are brushed, vertically brushed, and leaving the rest of the watch to be polished. We've got nice chamfers and bevels all around the case. And even 
the polishing here is done very well just under the bezel here the coinage of the bezel all the transitions here nice and crisp when compared to watches like the Kamasu, the Kano or the Meiko I think there is no doubt that the Orient Star watches they are built on a higher level of quality higher level of finish we've also got drill lugs over here so as mentioned earlier in this video you know, the strap changing fans out there they're gonna have a really good time because these drill lugs here will make strap changes so much easier and lastly the bracelet here is also a significant improvement upon the Kamasu's or the Kano's let's have a look at the bracelet over here solid end links solid links and we've got a solid clasp as well at least on the scissor over here the folding clasp if i'm not wrong this buckle over here is still stamped but no issues at all and let's spend some time to talk about this dial over here it's just simply the highlight of this diver we've got a lovely gradation green dial with a hint of texturing over here and you know every time i look at this okay, dial I just sort of get lost in this teal green starting from the hand stack over here and it gradates out to a dark green around the minute markers as well as the bezel so this bezel here does remind me of the sumo right the dark green sumo that i reviewed last year and now i'd like to bring your attention to the power reserve over here at the 12 o'clock marker so this feature over here i would think is a very divisive design because some fans out there will feel that you don't really need a power reserve indicator for your dive watches and of course some fans out there would feel that hey it is good to pay more to get this feature in your dive watch for me i do feel that the power reserve indicator over here sort of throws the dial a little bit off balance because when you push the logo and all the text to the six o'clock area i do feel that there's a slight imbalance when it comes to dial design here's a look at the loom shot of the orient star 1964 diver as you can see the loom is of high quality it's very bright very evenly applied and earlier on i was very afraid that due to the small loom plots this loom here will be subpar but of course i think in terms of brightness and all that there is no issue at all the loom quality remains very high even though the loom plots are slightly smaller than other Seiko and Orient divers. Welcome back to the studio. I have a wrist shot for you, a thick wrist shot because the bracelet here is brand new and unsized. But here you can see how the Orient Star 1964 wears on my wrist. My wrist size is about 17 cm, so that's six and three quarter inch. You will find that this watch here wears really well, even if you have smaller wrists. Okay, so despite the fact that the thickness is 14.5 millimeters. I really think that this one here wears so much better than the spec sheets would suggest. This is mainly due to the fact that we've got this sharp downturn here on the lux, and thereby it doesn't seem like the watch is sitting too tall. And I think this vastly improves the wearability. Let's have a look at the size comparison between the Orient Star 1964 and some other divers I have with me today in the studio. First up would be the comparison between the Orient Star and my own BB58. So one look, you will know that the Orient Star is indeed so much bigger than the BB58. Now in terms of case width, we're looking at 41 versus 39, right? So in terms of visual difference, it is definitely there. In terms of thickness as well, we are going to look at the 14.5 versus a 12 millimeter thickness. And next, we have a comparison between the 1964 and my Seiko Samurai. Now, strangely, we are looking at a 41 versus a 44, and yet visually, the difference isn't that big. I guess it's because the bezel sizes over here they are very similar. We are looking at about a 41, 40 to 41 millimeters bezel size. But when it comes to K size, in terms of actual measurements, the Samurai does have the advantage when it comes to K size. So all in all, I would say the Orient Star 1964 second edition is a really beautiful, well-built diver. But then again, the price is not exactly the most affordable. Coming in at close to 1.5k Singapore dollars. I think when it comes to this price range, 
you're looking at many other models to choose from, particularly from the higher-end prospect Seiko divers. Of course, you're getting plenty of upgrades such as a newer movement with power reserve indicator as well as a slightly longer power reserve, 50 hours power reserve. You're getting solid links, solid end links and AR coating on the underside of the dome, sapphire crystal. But at the end of the day, when we're looking at close to 1500 Singapore dollars, there are just simply too many choices out there. So there you have it. That was my really quick review of the Orion Star 1964 Diver. This is the second edition and it comes in a really beautiful looking teal green gradation dial together with George Pixie and this fancy looking cactus over here. My name is Andy. I'm from Singapore. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.